Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a great day today. As you can see, I've got one of Epiphone's cheapest Les Pauls in the studio. So what we're gonna do today is unbox this guitar, find out what it's all about, and of course, well, if you've got a couple hundred bucks kicking around, is it worth the price? Yes, welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned, we've got a budget Epiphone in the studio. This is the Epiphone Les Paul Special. So let's throw it up on the bench, open it up, and see what it's all about. So as you guys can see, this guitar is available in trans blue, trans black, or heritage sunburst. But the only one available locally to me was this blue one. So I went down and picked it up. Let's find out what it's all about. So here we go. Little headstock protector there. That's good. And let's go ahead and pull it out of the bag. All right, here's the first glimpse of the Epiphone headstock. As you can see, it says Special 2 on the headstock. Let's keep uh, opening it up. Well, here's the first look at the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2. Let's change camera angles and take a closer look. So here it is, the unboxed Les Paul Special 2 in trans blue. Of course, it is a special model, so just like the Gibsons, uh, all the Les Paul Specials have that slab top, they don't have the arch top, so a little bit of a different look, but there are a few really unique things about the Epiphone version. Let's check it out. All right, so let's hit up some of the specs on this guitar and find out what it's all about. Now, of course, on the headstock, well, it's good old Epiphone, tried and true. And even though the newer uh, Epiphone headstocks, I think do look a little bit nicer, uh, these ones I think everybody's just used to and you know, totally great. I think it looks good. Uh, on the backside, the tuning machines are not great. They're, you know, you guys have seen, you know, tuning machines like this on, on various other models. They're pretty much bottom of the barrel. They get the job done, but not super awesome. Uh, as for the nut, it's just listed as a nut with the nut width. So you can pretty much guarantee it's just cheap plastic. But when we zoom in, I gotta say, you know, for just a guitar I randomly ordered. I didn't look at it before. I just literally, you know, had it shipped to my house. It looks good. So that's a good sign. So even though it might just be cheap plastic, it's actually cut quite nice. Now moving on to the neck, here's where things get a little interesting on the front side and on the back. Now on the front side, a lot of the websites list this as a rosewood fingerboard. But when you look at it, it looks much more like Pow Ferro to me than rosewood. It's just got a little bit more of that, you know, brighter reddish hue to it. So I think this is a Pow Ferro fingerboard. So maybe some of the earlier models uh, had the rosewood, but this to me, it doesn't say one way or the other, but it really does look like Pow Ferro. Now, the other interesting thing on the back is, yikes, <laughs> this has a bolt on neck. Now the neck is mahogany, the body is mahogany, but yeah, it's got that bolt on neck, which, you know, is kind of sacrilege to a lot of people, but apparently uh, Epiphone was fine with it and probably, you know, passes on some of the savings of just a simple bolt on neck to the consumer. So <laughs> that's one of the huge things about the Epiphone Les Paul Special is, yeah, it's got a bolt on neck. So we'll see, uh, yeah, what it sounds like in a second. Uh, as for the pickups, they actually list the pickup specs on the pickups. So that's really appreciated. So I still have the sticker here. Uh, I'll take a picture for you guys, but it says designed by Epiphone USA, uh, Electrosola magnet wire, ceramic eight magnets, double vacuum waxed. So that's good. So that means they probably won't squeal like some other budget uh, Les Paul brands that don't really have great potted pickups. So I'm expecting no squeal from these. Uh, ceramic eight magnets are powerful. So again, we'll see what that sounds like in a second. And of course, one of the other big things is the control layout. So you got volume, tone, and three-way switch. So if you have other Les Pauls in your collection, uh, you might always be, you know, reaching right here to switch, but a very simplified uh, control layout with just a volume tone and three-way switch. All right, so we'll get into the nitty gritty details in a second. We'll talk about the fretwork on this guitar, the pots and switches, uh, how much it weighs, all those kind of things. But first, let's plug it in and see what it sounds like. Super curious about these ceramic Alnico uh, 8 pickups, how powerful they're gonna be. So anyway, let's plug it in and take a listen to some tones. Well, let's kick things off playing a few clean tones. So we're gonna start in the neck pickup and then work our way to the bridge. Let's just try some arpeggiated chords, maybe a few little licks and stuff like that. Thank you. 
You know, overall, that's not too bad, considering we're playing straight clean just with a little verb. Uh, lots of sustain on there, that chord was still ringing. Um, and yeah, I was, just wasn't sure how these ceramic pickups would sound um, played clean, but overall, not too bad. Let's try uh, the middle position, something similar. <laughs> You know, it definitely has a little bit of sizzle to it. Um, yeah, I think the pickups are, you know, quite high output. I think it'll sound great with gain, but overall really pleased actually how it sounds clean. I've played, uh, you know, other instruments with very hot output uh, pickups where, you know, some of the clean tones are just almost unusable. And here, you know, there is a little bit of sizzle to it, but uh, yeah, if you want to play clean, there's nothing stopping you. <laughs> All right, let's try the same thing or something similar in the neck pickup here. So I gotta say, after listening to those clips, I was kind of surprised at how well the guitar did over a variety of different genres. I was kind of expecting it to be, you know, not that great clean and, you know, a little bit better overdrive. And I think that is the case, but when I played those jazz chords at the end, I thought it sounded pretty good. So if you have this guitar and you want to play multiple genres, well, you definitely can. All right, now let's talk about the overall construction of this guitar and find out, well, what kind of instrument it is. Let's start by looking at the fretwork. Now on the front face, I gotta say there is a little bit of grittiness, but not too bad. It's actually fairly smooth and probably better than some other guitars in this kind of 200 to $250 price range. So overall, the front faces are pretty good. And of course, that's how you interact with the guitar, so that's good news. Now when we look at the, uh, the fret ends and the side profile, well, you gotta just say they are subpar. They're not really great. As you zoom in really far, you can see there's not really any shaping side to side or you know from the back of the neck onto the front face of the fret. There's just not a lot of molding going on. It's just a very basic, quick uh, fret dress, if you can call it that. Lots of tooling marks and that kind of thing. So I would say the front face, pretty good. The fret ends, uh, average or below average. So just know that they feel okay when you when you play on the guitar, but you know, it's not going to give you a high end experience. That's for sure. Now, moving on to a few other aspects of the guitar, uh, let's find out what's under uh, the cavity cover here. All right, you guys, let's take a quick look inside the cavity cover, see what kind of pots and switches we have. Now, the first thing I thought was a little weird was uh, the attachment screws are all really close together instead of on, you know, the extreme ends, you know, to really keep it tight. And there is a little bit of a lip there. So, you know, the cavity cover doesn't sit completely flush. Um, 
Now, that's just something to make note of. Also, uh, the output jack plate is also plastic, so no metal on that. Nice tight fit though, I gotta say. Shielding on the back. So let's take a look inside. Alpha pots, full-sized alpha pots. If I were a betting man, I would have said small-sized dime, dime pots for sure, but we got two alpha full-sized pots, which is fantastic. And of course, the three-way switch right there too. So actually uh, a little bit surprised. I, uh, yeah, I was expecting alpha pots, uh, the dime-sized ones or unbranded pots, but it's nice, we get full-sized um, yeah, alpha pots in there, so that's great. Now, one of the areas I like to check out right away when we're talking about a Les Paul style guitar with a stop tailpiece and a tunematic bridge is if there's any leaning on those posts. That sometimes happens, and while it's not the end of the world, aesthetically it doesn't really look great. And here I can say, thankfully, you know, it's very, very straight. So very happy about that. There's no leaning on the posts. It mostly happens on the stop tailpiece um, because that's where all the tension is pulling. And here it's just straight flat. So gotta say, really uh, very, very happy about that. And finally, let's throw it up on the scale and find out what this thing weighs. Now, as you can see, just over seven pounds. This is a very light guitar, so that's great news. There's no headstock dive on it at all, and it feels more like you're playing a Strat in terms of the weight than a Les Paul. So that's really great news. This is a very, very light guitar. So how do I rate the Epiphone Les Paul Special 2? Well, if I could sum it up in a sentence, more good than bad. There's a few quirky things about this instrument, but it's built really well. It's very light, it's super solid, and it sounds pretty good too. I think one of the main weaknesses is probably um, these tuning machines, they're not really great. But in terms of like the nut, the fretwork I would say is about average, as I mentioned. Uh, but overall the construction's really good on this guitar. And if you want, you know, a light, instrument that looks pretty cool. I should mention this is the plus top version of the instrument. So you do get a little bit of a flame top, really nothing, you know, very vibrant. Uh, but the satin version of this guitar is even cheaper. So if you just want like a bare bones Les Paul guitar, well, this one's pretty good. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the demo. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We got lots of great guitar content lined up for you guys in the future. Let me know if you'd like to see this guitar put up against something like the Firefly, which is also in the same price range and you know, a really budget guitar. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Other than that, have yourself a great day. Take care.